uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to Channel I'm Bushka, and today we're going to be talking about smart gameplay. This is a smart gameplay guide for PUBG Mobile, and the reason I want to make this video is because there's a whole lot of 200 IQ claptrap out there, clickbait titles that don't really give you any real insight into the game or help you get better. We want to look at the best practices, the habits that you can put in your own gameplay to turn you into a better player win more chicken dinners, win more gunfights, and just generally enjoy the game more. And today, I'm gonna to show you some situations, some little things that will maybe make you think differently about the focus and approach you take to tough times. Now, this is Mr. Weidra and I, we've just dropped down here. There's a bloke at school who's dropped aggressively with us. He saw us as a duo coming in, and he still stuck to his guns and came down, so we know he wants to have a bit of a gunfight. We're happy with that. Mr. Weidra has an M16, this bloke's got an AK, the result was never in doubt. Now, what I'm going to do is take the tendencies of most players, which is over-aggression. Most players universally are either far too aggressive or far too passive. They're either snakes in the grass or just absolutely balls out running down the corridor doing nothing sensible. And I'm going to expect him to push as I go inside to revive my teammate. So I wait. I'm just waiting here. And he's a very easy strafe out. Early game, no vest, no helmet, nothing. Very easy kill with a Tommy gun. And then I go and revive my teammate. Now, there's two things going on here. Obviously, I've been playing since season one. There's a lot of this stuff that's ingrained in my gameplay. And the reason it's ingrained is because I've done it wrong so many bloody times. Now, I don't particularly care about ranking anymore. It's just a, a very, very boring aspect of the game. I will drop for fun situations and to run odd loadouts. But if you want to drop hot, you need to have some semblance of this kind of gameplay in your back pocket. Now, I've just fired. There's a bloke I've been fighting on the other side. He now knows exactly where I am, and I'm anticipating him pushing up on my position here. So I'm going to do what I like to call a landmine grenade, where I'm just going to drop it in front of where I expect him to appear, and voila we get the kill. Now, this next clip is going to look pretty weird if... I mean, it's nothing special is going to happen here. But there's a couple of things going on that I really want you to, to think about. One of them is I'm on Erangel, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, this, it looks gorgeous with the new Erangel 2.0 update, and it is fantastic. And that was a bot. Why is Bushka showing me him killing a bot? Like There was a bot in the last clip, but you know, we didn't really talk about that. That was just a bot running through the first time. And there's a bloke that seemingly out of nowhere I've killed. And I'm going to run over and kill another bloke and it's like, Ripper, this is just a, such a, a bog standard ordinary clip. But it's not because what's going on here is you are taking in the info that the game is giving you and you are turning it into an absolutely devastating uh, bit of intelligence that you can take to win the game. That sounds like a, a vast overstatement looking at that clip. There was nothing special happening there. But I want you to watch. I saw a bot running around up here. Okay? I left the bot go. Why did I let the bot just keep running around? Because I strongly suspected when I rolled in here, my vehicle's just next to me, that there was another person up there. And that bot started shooting at someone that was lying in the grass. Now, this is important because Erangel is renowned for these kind of players, these super passive players. I remember right before I was talking about there's super passive, super aggressive players. You want to be somewhere in between. And that guy has now jumped out of his grass, panicked and left. And we've got the clear. And while that was happening, you see that M24, that M24 shot went off and that killed the guy that was on the hill opposite. And the game showed me that and there it goes, like he's knocked him, killed him, whatever. The game showed me that. So I now know that there's a guy over here with an M24 and he's probably going to be moving towards the area where he just killed that person to loot the box and then we get that clear. This is so important. I want you to really listen to this. The map and the game is giving you info constantly. Footsteps. Uh, shell direction, bots turning up and dying, boxes, uh, abandoned vehicles that aren't on respawn points. You know, when you run through a building and there's no 556 or 762 left on the floor. These are the kind of things that tell you about activity, that point to you towards where people are. Now, this is a contested area at school. 
this guy is in a very good, very defensible position. What I'm going to do here is actually force him into a really big error. He's not sure where everyone is. So I'm going to chuck Grenz up. Uh, and then I'm going to force him to come down. And then I'm going to wait for him to come through. The over-aggressive play was to push into a third-person situation where he can see me. The smart play is actually to force him to come into a situation where I can see him and he can't see me. And that's what you do by running Grens, running whatever. Now, this is actual gameplay. Hard, high-stakes, pressure gameplay. And I want to talk you through what's going on here. We've got a pincer going on. There is someone behind us and there is someone in front of us and the circle is very, very short now. There are three squads of two left. Mr. Weidra and I are inside the circle, but we're by no means in the best situation because we can't engage the guys that are going to push us uh, to our south without exposing ourselves to the guys who are lower down on the north. And this is a really frustrating thing. And what you will see me do in a certain part of this video is start to go forward for the wild push and actually stop and go back and wait. And that is that is playing smarter, not harder. And that really is the ethos we're trying to get across. That's the thing we want to talk about in our gameplay. Now, you might be an incredible player. You might be so gifted with your hand-eye coordination that you can do whatever you want to do, and that's fine. I'm not. I have to work by the numbers to get the job done. And I can have my occasional moments where everything comes off and that's good, but it's not something you can rely on. And you can see there, I moved back because look at the circle, the circle's coming in. It's forcing these guys to move. As I got caught out slightly, and now I'm in a situation where the guy has to come into me, I'm behind cover, and I'm hopeful of getting up to get a revive on my teammate. The problem is, that there's still one of these guys left alive and he has become exactly what we talked about before. A player that's playing far too passively. He's outside the circle and he's gone and he's cleared my mate and that is just terrible because that's now meant I have no one else to fight for. Like you've got to be really careful about who you shoot and when you shoot them and I'm actually impressed that this guy gets back into the game um, and I leave him. I just leave him there. I look at the circle and I think, the worst thing I can do is get stuck up here outside the circle, fighting against this guy, and then end up giving the duo that's downstairs uh, at the, the bottom of the cliff here, inside the circle, who, you know, it's gone to, um, the game. They basically get the game if we die up here fighting, and those guys get the game. And if that guy hadn't have cleared Mr. Ouija, there would have been a wonderful opportunity for him to leverage that knock and me trying to get the knock up, because of course I'm going to get my buddy up, that's all there is to it, uh, into a clear, and then he could get down here. As it is, we're playing smarter, not harder. I can't deal with him right now. The number one priority to win the game is to stay alive, and that means I've got to get in the final circle. I don't want to be taking an engagement in the blue this late. And look, there you go. Now, that means that we've got to actually do something a little bit tough, like drive into a duo, but they weren't prepped for that, and that was fine by me. That means that I'm actually still alive. Two left, so it's a 1v1v1. I am so surprised that the guy up the top gets back into this. I was certain that he would not get down that hill inside the blue in time, but he gets it done. And here we go. This is uh, something I would like to point out. If you're watching this and you want to know how to spot snakes and things, um, a good a good tip is I've done a video on this, how to spot targets more clearly. And I'm not going to go through it here, but there is some things you can do that will allow you to, or train your eye to actually spot the differences in the grass and the little bits of color discoloration or the, the heavier black behind shadows uh, when you're not even looking for it. You kind of want to do it out of the corner of your eye. There's a video that I'll put up on a playlist right here. If you want to go check that out, please do. There you go. Just click the click the link. Uh, also, if you can remember to like and subscribe to these videos, that would be pretty lovely. Uh, and God, I just come back from like about three weeks off when I shot this video. And my long game was really not good. Also, see how I'm not running um, in a sec. I'm not going to run up to the top of the hill and then over the crest. There's some great aphorisms you can use. Like, you can't win the game at the start. You can only lose it. And I, I feel like... When you get to final circles like this, where there are two 
other players and they are completely prone and crawling, that you exposing yourself and running over the top of a hill is just going to lose you the game. Like the, the odds of you clearing them both while upright and visible are not great. Now that first smoke that I threw was a, a smarter, not harder play. It's a, it's a fake smoke. Just to give one of the guys uh, who I know was running in there that I missed with the car 98K a little bit of a look. I saw something just over there, just a different color on the uh, edge of the grass. That's cool. And you're going to see greens are going to start flowing in here as well. There we go. Get a headshot. And you'll note these things. Like, this is... This is the kind of gameplay that you get with experience. And if the, the quicker you can get to this kind of level with your gameplay, the better off you'll be in terms of winning and losing these games. Sometimes going prone in the grass is the best idea. I don't do it. I never do it on general principle. I mean, I'm not kidding. Like, I'll lie down after getting hit. That's cool. And then hit a heel. But I won't go crawling around in the grass doing that like I did. Don't get me wrong. Everyone does it. I just find that to be kind of cheap and gimmicky and I like to outthink things and have a bit of a challenge. So throwing some more smokes. Again, this is uh, not a mistake. Those smokes are thrown in a very, very real pattern there to create kind of corridors for me to move down. So I'm, if the guy does move up on top of that ridge line, I can still get an angle over here and look to my left. Um, but there's nowhere left for him to be. I've got a really good view and I'm thinking... He's got to be in there, right? There he is. Just below the bush. I was actually thinking he was in the bush. And there's your winner, winner, chicken dinner. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Uh, look after yourself. Stay safe in the battlefield. Please remember to like and subscribe. It would help me tremendously. Um, and just hang around. We've got a lot of stuff coming down the pike. We've got some Payload 2.0 contests. Uh, all kinds of things. Love your work. And until next time, bye for now.